Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about 87 versus 91 anti-knock index fuels and any performance related differences that could be associated with these fuels. More specifically, this is about a study that Shell conducted and published in SAE International on basically testing out two different anti-knock index fuels uh, and seeing whether or not they had any performance differences for vehicles which recommended premium fuels. So what they did was they took five cars one European, one American, three Asian, uh, doesn't specify which, uh, but these five different cars all recommend using premium fuel uh, for whatever reason that may be, but you would assume that there would be some performance gain from it um, and that they would be able to adjust ignition timing in order to have better performance or be more efficient. So if you don't yet understand why advancing timing uh, increases performance, I have a separate video on that which you may want to check out first. So of these five vehicles, the European was a 2-liter direct injection and turbocharged, the American 2-liter direct injection turbocharged, the, one of the Asian cars 4-liter didn't have direct injection or turbocharged, and none of the Asian vehicles in fact were direct or turbocharged, but we have a 2.4-liter and a 2.5-liter. And this study was conducted, uh, published in 2013. So let's first talk about acceleration benefit, and what they looked at was the time it took um, from 5 to 80 miles per hour, 5 to 40, and 40 to 80, and then look to see if there was a percentage of how much faster the fuel using the 91 octane used versus using the 87 octane. So here we have the results for the acceleration testing. The European, as you can see, 3.82% faster overall from 5 miles per hour to 80 miles per hour, uh, and of that, 3.18 from 5 to 40 and 4.1% from 40 to 80. So using a premium fuel in this vehicle is providing a significant performance gain, uh, nearly 4% in acceleration, which is pretty incredible. Uh, for the American car, nothing really happened, um, no changes in acceleration. If not, it was maybe a little bit worse. Uh, this Asian car here with the 4 liter, uh, better acceleration on the low end, no difference from 40 to 80. Uh, this Asian with the 2.4, significant improvement, 3.25% overall and 4.78 from 5 to 40, 2.5 from 40 to 80. So once again, significant improvement through the use of premium fuel. And then this Asian vehicle with the 2.5 liter, uh, basically no improvements there. So what we've learned here is that some vehicles will take advantage of uh, ignition timing and enable better performance, others may not. So now let's move on to exhaust gas temperatures. And in this portion of the test, basically what they're looking at is they take the vehicle and they keep it at a set speed, either 40 miles per hour or 65 miles per hour, and they measure the exhaust gas temperature. And they do this with both the 87 and the 91 octane fuels. And what they're looking for is a decrease in the exhaust gas temperature using the 91 octane because you're converting more of the energy of the gasoline into useful work rather than heat sent out the exhaust. So you want to see lower exhaust gas temperatures here uh, in order to show that the engine is basically being more efficient. So looking at the results, the European car was able to lower exhaust gas temperatures by 16 degrees uh, when traveling at 65 miles per hour. Uh, both the American and the initial Asian vehicle, uh, no significant differences in exhaust gas temperatures. And then with both of the Asian vehicles towards the bottom, uh, both of them saw improvements in the exhaust gas temperature, uh, 6.24 degrees Celsius up to 8.24 degrees Celsius on the 2.5 liter Asian vehicle. So what have we learned here? Uh, well, basically, whether or not uh, which fuel you use, there can be a performance gain, and it's highly dependent on which vehicle you have and whether or not it was designed to take advantage of that higher anti-knock index fuel. And basically, the results are dependent on whether or not this engine is actually going to change its ignition timing in order to take advantage of the better fuel. So this doesn't mean by any means that every European vehicle is going to give you an, a performance benefit if it recommends premium and you use 91 versus 87. Likewise, it doesn't mean that every American vehicle out there can't take advantage of you know, higher octane fuels and actually have a performance benefit from it. It just means this one in particular uh, didn't really make use of it and the reason they recommended premium fuel, who knows, maybe they were just trying to fit in, or maybe they thought there was an added benefit of the higher concentration of additives in higher octane fuels, but I doubt it. Honestly, I would think that if you were driving this vehicle, it would make the most sense to use the lower octane fuel. Now, as far as these 
three different Asian vehicles. Uh, one of them did see uh, acceleration benefit on the lower end, lower speeds, uh, though nothing as far as efficiency. And then one of them saw not only performance gains, but efficiency gains. And then the final one saw simply efficiency gains. So it did make sense for all these vehicles. So overall, I think the common recommendation would be if your car recommends premium fuel and you do want to take advantage of the fact that you will get more performance and better uh, efficiency from that premium fuel, I think it makes sense to use premium fuel because most of the time you are going to see an added benefit. But it could be worth doing your own individual testing and finding out whether or not you actually do get a performance gain or an efficiency gain from using that better quality, higher octane fuel. So a big thank you to Shell for hooking me up with this information, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.